this one guys welcome back to clash with eric guys to commemorate the first royal champion skin that has been added to clash of clans one year after the town hall 13 release we're going to be updating my town hall 13 upgrade priority and lab guide today and we're going to be upgrading all of my guides here throughout the week so we can make sure everybody is up to date here on the current state of the game so guys make sure you hit that like button hit that subscribe button and if you're going to be picking up this new royal champion skin make sure you use code eric it does a lot to help with the channel and I really, really appreciate it. So guys, let's go dive into this guide here and let's make sure you guys are starting off Town Hall 13 on the right foot. All right, guys, here's the plan. We're gonna start off by looking at the buildings that don't need to be upgraded at all because they're already maxed from Town 12. In fact, they're already up on the screen. So take a look at those. These ones don't need to be upgraded. Then we're gonna go look at the buildings that do need to be upgraded and the order that you need to upgrade them to maximize your offense before we increase your war rate. We wanna make sure that by the time you increase your war rate and start matching against tougher Town Hall 13s, that you actually have enough offensive strength to actually be able to take them down. And then you can start stopping those three stars and start to get Town Hall 13 really, really rolling. All right, guys, let's kick it off here. So we're gonna assume going into this that you're coming in as a max Town Hall 12. If you're not, then I want you to strongly consider going back, finish maxing out of Town Hall 12, and then come into Town Hall 13. You don't want to come in rushed. You don't want to come disadvantaged. Town Hall 13 is hard enough as it is. Okay, so you're going to get six new structures as we start Town Hall 13. You're going to get three new traps, a spring trap, a seeking air mine, and a bomb. Go ahead and drop those right now, and we can use those cheap, fast upgrades as spacers and just to keep our builders busy while we're waiting for higher priority upgrades and collecting that loot to be able to get them because they're all very, very expensive. Everything at Town Hall 13 is extremely expensive. It's going to be imperative that you space out your builders and choose upgrades that are going to make so you have builders staggering out to have one free up every few days so you have time to gather loot in between. So... One of our first upgrades is going to be the Royal Champion. We can drop that Royal Champion right away. We're going to add it to our day one upgrades right up there. And we'll get ready to get her rolling because she has a lot of levels to go. She takes a long time to upgrade and you want to get her moving as fast as possible and get her maxed out soon. She will take high priority over all the other heroes there unless you're really, really, uh, determined to get your queen up and you can kind of move her up at the same time as your, uh, your grand warden. So that works out really, really nice. Okay, day one upgrades. We have a couple of elixir upgrades. We obviously have that dark elixir upgrade and we're gonna use the elixir upgrades right away. We wanna get our dark elixir storage upgraded because we need that upgrade to get this uh, raw champion moving fast. And also you can only get one queen or king upgrade before you have to upgrade that unless you have a gold pass to get the discount. So you can maybe delay that if you if you really uh, can map it out there. But I think it's best to just get it out of the way early and make sure you have maximum capacity so you can stockpile some Dark Laser because you're going to need a lot of it and you need to farm like crazy to keep up. Okay, Laboratory is another Elixir upgrade and you're going to want to consider using a book on this. If you have a book building, consider throwing it down there right away there so you can get some research going. You can pop in some Hammer of Hiding, some Hammer of Spells, and of course you can uh, throw in some other books and stuff there to get some research going. And you might be popping runes and stuff like that like crazy too. So use, use your magic items, guys. This is what we've been saving them for. Don't hold them any longer. Start popping them off there. Okay, so scatter shots are a questionable day one upgrade. You can start to build a scatter shot if you want to. It's going to take up your entire gold storage capacity. Or you can start working on your elixir storages because you're going to need a little bit of extra elixir storage capacity to eventually upgrade your warden and, of course, for research. So you're not going to need a ton more, so it's not like a huge priority, but... I personally think uh, going after the scatter shot is a nice uh, thing there, and it's going to make your defenses get a lot stronger. Even level one scatter shot is very, very powerful. So we could drop one now, and then we'll hold on to the other one until the first one finishes, and then we'll start the next one with the same builder. I think that's a good way to go there. You can push these down to lower on the priority path if you want to, and after they're done, we'll wait to level two until we get a little bit further down the line here. All right, so storage capacity is very, very important. We want to make sure that we can actually have enough storage capacity to be able to do these very, very expensive upgrades and also a little bit to stockpile extra resources to work on walls because we have a ton of walls to work on and it's going to take a long time to get them done. So start them early and I get those uh, storages up there so we don't have to worry about storage capacity issues later on. 
All right, so we have army camp upgrades. We can go up to 300 army camp space there. So go ahead and start upgrading those army camps and get all of them upgraded as soon as possible. And we can also upgrade our workshop if you want to be able to donate the new siege machines here. Hero upgrades. So as you continue moving through here, I personally farm like crazy and I get all four heroes upgraded continuously until they are max. So if you're farm crazy like me and you can keep up with that uh, demand there, then you can keep four builders working on that. And if you haven't been working on your builder base, maybe you should think about that and start working towards that six builder over there. So you can uh, come over here and have a little bit more to work with here. All right. So obviously heroes are always a high, high priority there and you're going to push them up as soon as possible. So while they're moving through, you're going to be able to start working on some defenses. You're going to have your first priority is going to be seeking air mines. Kind of interesting, right? Seeking air mines. Why seeking air mines? Well, one of the first things that a lot of people are going to be upgrading that are going to be attacking your base is healers. And a level three seeking air mine does not take out a healer. It almost does, but they stay standing. And they make so yetis and witches and all. And Pekka's and all these uh, new ground attacks here that are going to be hitting your base there are going to wreck you. Queen charges because it's going to take two mines to take down every healer and that is not going to be enough there to stop those attacks. So seeking air mines are a huge priority when you start into your defenses. All right, so now we can start in with the high impact defenses here. We can get the town hall. We can start upgrading that Giga Inferno and the damage on that ramps up like crazy. So... Uh, that's a very, very big thing right there. So now we have obviously the artillery, the infernos, the expos, and your second level of the scatter shots. I want to say start with the scatter shots there, get them up, get the town hall next, then go to the eagle artillery. Then you can go to the infernos and the expos. But keep in mind there, you want to make sure that your builders are freeing up at different times because you're only going to be able to upgrade one thing. And if you have two builders free up at the same time, then you're going to have one sitting idle for a while. So give yourself some space in your upgrades so that you can have the builders free and up staggered. Okay. All right. From there, it's just kind of a free for all here with the last defenses. Very, very simple. Just upgrade them. A lot of them have two levels to go. So don't, there's no specific order that you want to upgrade them. I'm just saying get these ones upgraded first because they're the highest impact. And then you can actually start defending attacks there and make your base really, really strong. And then these ones are just going to be icing on the cake there to just polish off your defensive capabilities. And then mortars, we kind of pushed that to the very end of the list there. I would uh, do them last and get all these other ones done first. Simple enough. Okay, we also have a couple trap upgrades here. They're going to be a little bit cheaper. They're going to be a little bit faster. So you can squeeze those in. They're not a huge deal here. They're just going to add a little extra damage. But I think the defenses themselves are more important other than the seeking air mine. All right, so that pretty much wraps it up for the upgrade priority order. Good luck, and we're going to go into some attacks now, and I want to show you some simple attacks that you can upgrade just a couple different things, and you can get started into awesome Tunnel 13 attacks right away. All right, guys, you know them, you love them. Our first strategy is Electro Dragons. This attack is very, very powerful. We start this attack here by sending in two lightnings to take out the air sweepers. If the air sweepers are by an air defense, they consider throwing in one quake as well to go and destroy the air defense there. It's probably worth it, right? Then we throw in side-by-side -side rages and our early ward ability to go after the highest density damage area of the base to just charge in and get awesome high power chains right off the bat there. We use a couple of rages right there, and the last one is saved for the blimp. The blimp is going to cross through the dragons, where we already know that the area is clear of black mines. It's going to go to the town hall, and then we're going to rage it up. Put that rage so it hits the dragons that are coming in from behind, so they also get raged. The rage up blooms there, and one shot from that electric dragon dropped that town hall really, really easily. Then, we just kind of coast in the back of the base there. We're using our heroes to funnel both sides. I put the queen on one side, I put the king on the other side there, and then joined in the royal champion late so that they can all join together and push into the back side of the base. Guys, this was a tournament war base right here. A completely maxed Town Hall 13, and I came in here and absolutely tore it to shreds here with Electro Dragons. Now, this attack is nice because it doesn't necessarily have to come in with the heroes. Obviously, the better 
And the higher level heroes that you have, and the more heroes you have awake at the time there, this attack is going to be more and more powerful. So you can go in here and actually swag the Roach Champion a lot of times. So it's a really nice uh, strategy while she's upgraded. And you're probably already familiar with it. So very, very good for a starter strategy. Zap Mass Switches. A staple at Town Hall 13. It was a staple at Town Hall 12 too. This attack is super, super powerful, guys. Except for our priority for targets has shifted a little bit here. We're now going after scatter shots instead of Infernos, and that's the only big difference here. But the Witches are still the same levels we had at Town Hall 12. Really, the big difference in the attack here from Town Hall 12 to Town Hall 13 is adding in the Royal Champion. In fact, a lot of times, as a Town Hall 12 on my other accounts here, I come in with this attack against Town Hall 13s and it does really, really well. So definitely consider coming in with, uh, this one uses Super Giants. Uh, you can go in with three Golems instead of the Super Giants. I personally like the Golems because they hold the attention of the Eagle Artillery. But the, the Giants can do the same. The Giants are just a little bit faster at breaking through walls. So they get the Witches moving through the base a little bit faster. That is your personal preference. I don't personally like the Super Giants, but I know that uh, Edgy does. He likes them. Or EGI. Whatever, however, whatever his name is. <laughs> I should know that. Alright. So. We like to have the Queen follow a Wall Wrecker to the Town Hall. And she can take it down there. Try to make so that the Wall Wrecker doesn't have the path too far. That's why I came in from the side of the base and just kind of like sideswiped it there. But look at the Witches just kind of powering through. They're just completely overwhelming everything. And they had to go through two multi-infernos and they still made it through. How crazy is that, right? He used the Ward ability to protect the Wall Wrecker and also to protect the Witches as they fought off the Multi-Inferno's and that actually got into the second Multi-Inferno. The first Multi-Inferno was tanked by all the, uh, by all the Super Giants, which is really nice. Alright, so as you see here, he smashed through this base here and he is going to get this triple easy day. And he even has a Queen ability still. He pops it at the end there and with only a couple defenses left, this is no problem. When you can zap out the scatter shots, witches can power through just like they did at Town Hall 12. And then the uh, extra power that you'd lost from zapping out the multi infernos or whatever at Town Hall 12, you can reinforce that by sending in a royal champion or not if she's upgrading. It's all good. That is a very expensive uh, Dark Elixir army there. So keep that in mind there as you go through with that one. It is going to only be used for war generally. Don't use that for farming. If you're farming, then uh, strongly consider. Dropping down to Master's League and just uh, going in there and like using Barbarians and Archers or you could use Dragons, which is actually what we're going to next. So let's go look at that. All right, guys, I was looking around for a Zap Dragon attack, but nobody used one this war. So I'm going to do you one better. As soon as this frame fades, you're going to have a Zap Dragon video pop up right over my face right here. And you're going to have a full Town Hall 13 playlist with all kinds of Clash of Clans esports and strategy guides right up there. So definitely go check that out there. And also hit that like button if this was useful. Subscribe to the channel for more and go down in the comment section. Leave me a comment and let me know if this was useful for you. And while you're down there, pick up a base link in the pinned comment to get started off on the right foot. All right, guys. That's where we're going to wrap it up for today. Thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you guys in the next one.